just completely aggravated I would have been last week, Armin. All my teams are losing. <laughs> my bracket looks like hell. And I would have had to have actually spent time talking about something that sounds like the TV shows I refuse to watch. I refuse to watch reality television. I don't watch it. I, it's, it's, I, I, if, if I want to kill off brain cells, I'd rather just go out for a happy hour. You know? I'd rather have a couple of brandy old fashions. But that's, I mean, we have, our, our, our political process has descended into nothing but a pure circus. Over the weekend, I got an email from, um, from Jerry Bont talking about a Showtime show with supposed news reporters, alleged news reporters like Mark Halperin. And it was talking about the, the greatest show on earth, the political circus that is the Republican nomination process. And I know they threw a few, uh, they probably throw a few pieces on Bernie and Hillary in the mix just to try to pretend they were balanced. Do, do any of you guys at WISN want to be, you know, want to be part of this program? And I, and I thought, no, because I would actually like to not have to shower three times a day. Because it's, it's, it's that disgusting, these, these, this type of coverage. And it's, eh, it is what it is. But we, in, instead of just going with a little bit of bread and circus, instead of just finding a little bit of distraction, it's always fun to find distraction in the very, very serious news of the day. It's very serious news with a terror attack. With the you know looming crisis, debt crisis that we are are dealing with, and instead, instead of bread and circuses occasionally, it's bread and circuses nonstop. All right, I do believe I do have uh, Donald Trump on the phone. I think. Let's see, Donald Trump, are you on the phone? Hi, Vicky. Yes. Hey, I well, am. Hi, Vicky. Welcome to the program. I didn't promote this because I didn't get a total confirmation on this, but it's it's a it's great to have oh, you on the program. Thank you. you have for... Now you have confirmation right now. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to have you on the program. Good, All right. So I put put Thank aside you. my rant on reality TV here for a second uh, okay. on 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 the Kardashians, and let's talk some some serious stuff. You uh, in Wisconsin, where it's it's a different state, sir, than you might be used to. This is a state where the conservatives have pulled together coalitions that you wouldn't necessarily think could be pulled together. And that is by bringing a whole bunch of different people from different parts of the Republican Party and some Democrats together. And that is um, that is a coalition, frankly, sir, that your campaign has looked to splinter, not maintain here. How do you win Wisconsin? Well, I don't think that there's a splinter, actually. I think that uh, if you look at it, I'm, I'm conservative in my views, but I, I probably uh, am very, very conservative on trade. But some people would say I'm not that conservative. I'm a believer in free trade. But we don't have very smart people, in, or do we have very good people in the White House, and we're getting killed on trade in our country. And so is Wisconsin getting hurt very badly. Other countries, what they're doing is manipulating their currency. They're devaluing their currency, Vicky, and they're making it very, very hard. I, I can't say impossible, but close to impossible to compete. And Wisconsin companies and many other companies throughout this country, they can't compete with China, with Mexico, with Japan, with uh, India, Vietnam, all these countries play numbers on us, and we don't do anything in return. With, with, all, the, with, all, with all due respect, Wisconsin is yeah. competing very nicely uh, in its manufacturing well, sector. Wisconsin is actually the fourth in the Midwest in terms of in manufacturing growth, and manufacturing is 21% of our economy and growing in our state. So how yeah, are we getting hurt by free more. trade? Sure. Well, fourth in the Midwest is not that great, okay, to start off with, all right? But, but even if you, look at other if you look at other states in the Midwest, they're doing okay, but they're not doing great. They've lost tremendous amounts of business to Mexico and other places, uh, tremendous numbers of jobs. I mean, you look at Michigan, you look at Ohio, you look at different places. Uh, pl like, I won Michigan. What they're going through is unbelievable with the manufacturing that they're losing. And but you we're not losing Ohio manufacturing too. in Wisconsin. But we're not losing manufacturing in Wisconsin. We have, right now, over 36,000 jobs 
waiting to be filled in, in Wisconsin. Our problem isn't that we don't have the jobs in manufacturing. Our problem is that we don't have the bodies to fill the jobs in manufacturing in Wisconsin. We've actually gone out of our way to make Wisconsin very appealing as a manufacturing state with tax reform and a number of other different governmental reforms that have, that have you know, in, in a way attempted to lure other jobs away from other states and indeed even from some companies who might have been thinking about overseas manufacturing. But We're doing look- pretty well here. Uh, if you look at the numbers in Wisconsin, the numbers in Wisconsin are not, I mean, it may be the jobs, but the numbers in Wisconsin are not great numbers. It's not big from last year. It's not big from the year before. It's it's a little bit on the stagnant side. And it, I mean, you just take a look at it. When you look at other countries and you look at what they've done by comparison, they're through the roof because they're taking our jobs. They're taking our jobs from many places, but they're taking our jobs. They're taking our... our but but that's not just... That, that's not true. Trade deals, but but Mr. Trump, that that isn't trade deals that that has some of our manufacturing that will never come back. By the way, textile manufacturing, cell oh, phones. I think it comes back. No, I think it comes back. Absolutely, but, but, it comes back. If you when, get, when if you, you can when you can pay eighty cents an hour to somebody with no with with a regulatory environment that's practically non-existent, and you think that they're going to come back into the United States where people would prefer to have fifteen, sixteen, twenty dollar an hour jobs in manufacturing? How are we going to no, make I things think, here? That, that right now we have already gotten accustomed and built into our budgets as cheap goods to consume. You're right, but they are coming back, and the jobs can come back. What's happening is dollar devaluate. What they've, de- what they've done is they've played numbers with the dollar, and they are devaluing their currency to such an extent that companies in our country are unable to compete, Vicky. I mean, we're losing. You take a look at some of the states. Like you say, you're fourth in the Midwest. Well, I don't think fourth in the Midwest is very good. I mean, maybe you think it's good. I don't think it's very good fourth in the Midwest because the Midwest is not doing particularly well. I mean, but I look but, at but how of- are you going to make Wisconsin better in terms of our manufacturing base, which is not about those those companies that are gone and they're and they're gone and they're staying gone. The, the clothing that is made in Pakistan, the clothing that is made in India, the cell phones that are assembled in China, those aren't coming back here because I then we can't afford to buy them amazing. any longer. So what, what about our specific heavy manufacturing in Wisconsin and skilled manufacturing think, in Wisconsin? Think, oh, well, if you look at heavy uh, if heavy in Wisconsin, take a look at what Komatsu is doing when you talk about manufacturing. Take a look at what Komatsu is doing in Japan. Japan has devalued the yen to such an extent that it's having Caterpillar is having a very, very hard time competing. John Deere is having a very, very hard time competing. You take a look at what's happening, and it's going to get worse and worse, and nobody's there to But you're, you're, but you're only – but if you look, you, you can you can absolutely make a case for the currency devaluation problem. But in terms well, of that's, of, a, that's, of, a, that's uh, a big part of the case. OK, but but that's not going to be bringing back all of these jobs that you're talking about when when the bigger problem, when the bigger back, problem in the U.S. Back. is, it, it, sir, is the regulatory environment, which I've never heard you discuss a single time. I always discuss it. Regulatory is very important. I mean, we have regulations on regulations. We have the farmers have regulations like they've never had before. A puddle forms on their land. It's considered a lake for regulatory purposes. The regulations are a big part of it. The regulations are out of control in our country. But the monetary devaluation is absolutely killing many of our companies. It's making it impossible for them to compete with other countries. And I'm not just talking about China. I'm talking about many other countries. You mentioned heavy manufacturing. As an example, I I talk about Komatsu. Take a look at how they're doing compared to Caterpillar and, and companies that we have just over the last couple of years. It's a disgrace what's going on. We're losing tremendous amounts of jobs and tremendous amounts of business we're we're losing a lot of jobs in manufacturing but a lot of the jobs in manufacturing are not necessarily lost they're simply replaced jobs with automation with robotics just, you're okay, seeing in a, well, you're, you're seeing efficient yeah, there is that too you do have robotics but there's there's also they're being lost to care. i mean there there's a all lot right, of right. jobs that are being lost Let, let's and talk I, about I think what let, Vicky, I think what can happen is I want to see Apple make their various products in the United States, and that can happen. But it can happen if not you when you're not when you're paying somebody eighty cents an hour to assemble your cell phones, and you're locking them to their to their assembly lines in a country that no, that not only does not have any regulatory controls, but also doesn't practice human rights. 
Well, then maybe you should make the case you shouldn't be buying from that company, you know, that country. I mean, you could also make that case. But, okay, then, then do, saying, does everybody want to spend two grand the, on a cell phone? All right. No, Look. I'm saying without the devaluation, without all of this tremendous devaluation, you'll make product in this country. Now, what's the difference? Maybe the product costs a little bit more, but you're going to have a lot more jobs. You're going to have jobs all over the place. So instead of having all of these jobs, and those are good jobs, being based in Vietnam and in China and all these countries that kill us with devaluations. So it's okay to pay a little happen. bit. It's, it's okay to pay more. Well, yeah, because you're going to have more jobs. You're going to have far more jobs. I mean, you have areas, you have states in this country where they are really suffering. I mean, suffering greatly where they don't have the jobs. And but I'll, but I'll, have, I'll, I'll tell you something. That the, re something but the reason why we don't have jobs don't have in the United chance. States is not because of free trade. All right. Let, can, let, let me ask you this question in a different tack, because this is something that worries a lot of people in our state. Can, yeah. Hillary Clinton beats you in Wisconsin. Yeah. Hillary Clinton beats you nationally. And we have a very important Senate race that we are worried about in the form of uh, Senator Johnson. How do you win Wisconsin in a in a in a it's a purple state that leans blue. And how do you win Wisconsin in a way that also assists the United States Senate in retaining Republican control? Well, I think I will win Wisconsin. I guess I'm a little bit up on cruise right now in Wisconsin, but I think I will win. You know, I'm going to spend the whole week in Wisconsin. I think I'll, I'll not only win Wisconsin. You know, there are polls that have me also ahead of Hillary there. I don't know if you know that, but there are polls where I'm. Quite a bit ahead of Hillary. I, I don't. I, I, you can, you I can share even, the poll. I haven't even focused on Hillary other than two months ago when she said something and I said something back, and she didn't come out so well in that little volley. But but I have not focused on Hillary yet. I'm focusing on uh, finishing this off, and I have two people in there, well, I guess. Uh, I have two people in there. And, you know, I started off, I was 1 in 17 or 1 in 18, and now we're down to two people left and two people other than myself, and we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm doing very well. I'm, I'm up by almost 300 delegates. I'm up by millions of votes. You know, I've gotten millions of votes more than Kasich and millions of votes more than Cruz. Millions. I Hillary Clinton. Million. Hillary Clinton. The last real clear uh, politics average has you is beating you by 11 points. It's all right. That's not a lot. Ronald Reagan was down by 25 points, and he ended up winning by. 14 or something yeah Ronald and there was Reagan also was but there was also by... a hostage crisis going on at the time but on wisconsin was there's, look there's, at there's i've got of, i've got the last numbers as cruz look right i got I, I got the last numbers as cruz 36 you 31 Kasich 21 in wisconsin those are the last poll numbers we had uh published over the weekend in wisconsin so 36 31 ted, ted cruz is beating you by a couple of points in Wisconsin, well, just a point that. or two I outside still, the margin still, of error. I actually see I see one that we're beating him by three points. That's the one that I oh, Okay. So, well, I it, so within the margin of error, though, again, this is a state that has a state that pulled together Republican coalitions that didn't, you know, Scott Walker didn't win or get the incredible reforms that we were actually able to pass through in a blue state turned purple state like Wisconsin by dividing Republicans. And how do you divide Republicans? Well, I'm not looking to divide Republicans. But, but you I are dividing Republicans. Also be, well, I, you know, I'm not looking to divide Republicans. I will be better than anybody else as president. I'll bring back our jobs. I'm much stronger at the border than anybody else. I'm much stronger with illegal immigration. I'm much stronger on the Syrian crisis where people are being poured, in, poured into our country that we have no idea where they come from. And I think I'll do very well in Wisconsin. But I'm leading by millions of votes. I don't know. Maybe you don't see that. I'm leading by millions of votes. Well, over we're we're, we're a small state. We're a small state. So we only have 4.9 well, no, million just, people. I'm in just state. saying that. No, but you're a great state. But I'm leading by millions of votes in, in terms of the primary. I think I've won 21 or 22 states. Cruz has won, what, but six me, or seven. But, but that just saying I'm the leading by millions of votes. Home in, in, but, sir, in Wisconsin... This is a, it's it's a different animal in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, we have shown how reform works specifically in Wisconsin. We have a different kind of collection of Republicans here that we have pulled together in Wisconsin to to continue to maintain Republican victories in Wisconsin requires coalition building among Republicans and moderate Democrats in Wisconsin. How are you doing that in Wisconsin? Because, again, we also have to, to think about our Senate race as well. 
For sure. And he's a good man, by the way. I spoke to him the other day, and I think he's going to win. I think he's going to do excellently, uh, Senator Johnson. Let me just tell you, I think I have very good relationships with people. I think I will continue to have. I think you'll see that. I'm going to spend the entire week in Wisconsin. I've been there numerous times over the years. I have friends that live in Wisconsin. They tell me they think I'll do very well, and we're going to find out. I mean, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I can tell you, in terms of the country, I'll be the best in the military. I'll be the best at the borders. I'll be best with illegal immigration. I will be absolutely best with jobs, jobs for the country. And people know that. They also know I'm very strong on Second Amendment. Nobody's stronger than me. And we have a lot of good things that going. Uh, Common Core, we have to get out. Obamacare, we have to terminate and, and replace with something, by the way, far better. So I think I'm going to do very well. I mean, we'll have to see. Obviously, you're not going to vote for me, but, you know, if I lost one vote. Well, it, it, I, which is not that is not necessarily true. It, it, we're not talking about the primary. Look, if you're gonna if you're gonna be the presidential candidate, you have to find a way to unify a whole bunch of people right now who are at each other's throats, and we feel it viscerally here because we went through the occupation in 2011 and a recall election into 2012. No, and you that, have, that's no, the no, landscape you're no, facing here is when you've got Republicans acting not. like recallers to other Republicans who don't necessarily agree with them on their presidential pick. Uh, that's not exactly building unity, especially when we have got. A very important Senate race as well. well you mentioned you mentioned the border um, very specifically in, in terms of this wall that you want to build. You want to build a wall. How and what does it look like? Where does it go? So how, how, how do we pay for it when we're, you know, 19 trillion dollars in debt? Mexico is going to pay for it. Mexico has taken advantage of our country like almost no other. China would be always the leading abuser. But Mexico has taken advantage of our country. They've taken our jobs. I mean, just this last short period of time, uh, uh, you look at the, the number of companies that have left, that are, have announced that they're leaving. Nabisco is leaving Chicago. You look at uh, carrier air conditioning is leaving. They're going to Mexico. So Ford, Ford Motor Company is building another massive plant in Mexico. Uh, Mexico is doing a number of us like you've never seen. They're making a fortune. But that has nothing to do with the border. That has nothing to do with the wall. It's got a lot to do with the border. It's got a lot to do with the fact that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our money, and the wall is going to be a tiny fraction of the kind of money we're talking about. The wall, if it costs $10 billion, Mexico's, we've got a trade deficit with Mexico of $58 billion a year. That shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't have a, an imbalance like that. Fifty. Okay. How are you going to get Mexico yeah. to pay for the wall when they said that Very over simple. our we're dead body? We're going to tell them to pay, and, and they won't do it. And we're going to say, "What's well, okay? We'll take it in the form of a tax. We're going to tax some of the companies that are going down there. But you have companies going to Mexico. But companies are going to Mexico carry. because it is cheaper to do business there. And so you're going They're to going, tax companies that are already seeking cost then, saving mechanisms. Okay, and then here's okay, let me give you one example. Carrier. Carrier leaves the United States. They fire all of their people. They're all unemployed now, as is shortly to be unemployed. Fourteen hundred people. This is times many, many, many companies. They go to Mexico, they build their plant, they make stuff, they sell it back in the United States. We get nothing for it. We get nothing. Yeah, we get, all well, if we get cheap, we actually get cheaper prices on the no, products. Get, no, no, the prices are going to stay the same and go up. But, okay, they're going to make the, more profit. The prices are going to stay the same and they're going to go up. Okay. There, there's nothing the wrong with making more profit as a company in a in a in a globally making, look, I know about making profit, but you know what? I know you do. We lose we we lose all of our jobs. We lose we're going to lose millions of jobs. We've already lost millions of jobs to the same thing. And then here's what happens: when we go to Mexico, you pay a tax. Okay, when they sell to us, there is no tax. When I have friends that are in the manufacturing business. And with China, they do a lot of business. They try and do it with China. It, number one, it's almost impossible for them to get their product in China. And number two, if they do get it in, they have to pay a big tax. When can, can China I, back to the wall. Us, it's no tax. It's not wouldn't it be easier? Yeah, wouldn't it be easier to just enforce the existing laws well, that we already that. have on immigration sure. rather than but penalizing not, companies that are seeking ways to increase their profits yes, for their shareholders? Excuse me, but they're not enforcing the laws. Right. Part of the laws have to be monetary manipulation because what they're really doing is killing us. And the new TPP is a disaster for this. But country. what does it have to do with the wall? Way, the wall is the wall is symbolic. No, no. We're is it true? We're also talking. To, excuse me. We're talking about the wall. We're also talking about trade. 
The wall has got to be built because it's going to help stop the drug problem. We have massive amounts of drugs f flowing into our country. We have uh, – you have no idea how bad illegal immigration is in this country. It's bad. Number one, it's dangerous. But it's complicated, bad, too. But it's so dangerous. It's not complicated. To me, it's not complicated. To me, you have to come into the country legally. You have to come in. Sheriff Joe Arpaio of Arizona endorsed me. Cruz thought he was going to have it. Cruz said there's not even a contest I, between the two people. I understand the frustration that people have with illegal aliens coming into the country. And, and, the, and the main problem is, is that we don't enforce the laws that we have that exist right now. The Obama administration oh, won't enforce the laws. The Bush laws. administration Excuse didn't enforce me, the we laws. We don't have any laws against... We don't have any laws against uh, devaluing currencies and monetary manipulation. And that's where countries are killing us. More than okay. any other element, that's where they're killing us. And there are no laws about that. The new PPP doesn't have much on that. And you can't, you can't have that new Trans-Pacific Partnership. That is a disaster. By the way, Cruz was in favor of it. It'll, it'll absolutely decimate our states, the various states, including Wisconsin, by the way. So, hey, look, what I want to get, but I, I, I'm not getting on specifics this on this, uh, on the wall and why that, why that is so the wall key is very so simple. important. The if, the, wall if your biggest, built, the okay. wall has got to be built to stop illegal immigration. What's it look like? It's got to be built to stop, stop the drugs. The drugs are pouring through our country and poisoning the blood. I won New Hampshire in a landslide. But, okay, One of the but, things that, the biggest problem New Hampshire has is a drug problem with heroin. It comes right through the southern border. The drug problem through the southern border, though, is also crossing where there is some double, double thick, very tall, 15 foot fencing in the form of a wall, and the dope dealers just tunnel right under it. it. They, they, they go right they, around it, they go right through it. I'm talking about a wall that works. I'm not talking about right. where they have, you know, five miles of fence because they do have fencing. They have, it's called 12 foot fence, and they have. I, I mean, but I just don't. Cases, okay. In some cases, they go right through it. They go right. Get, get yeah, they go under they it. Go right through it. They build roads. They go. They build roads right through it. So under I mean, it. They, they show. I saw in Time magazine they had a ramp going right over the top of one of these little fences. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a real wall. That All right. So I, what, what does it look in. like? It looks What's it, I mean, a concrete it's wall, a, a stone wall. Concrete. Yeah, precast. It'll be precast. It'll look. It'll look very nice. It'll look fine. All right. Um, a wall. And a, nice. a wall. All, it all, nice all, the entire. Okay. Look good. That's, that's a lot of money. Um, and and you know, it seemed to me that, that perhaps we could. For. Perhaps we could just start. Vicky. Perhaps we could just start using E-Verify for employment and actually penalizing the employers who hired illegal alien labor might be a little easier to discourage the massive amount. Of, well, of illegal that immigration that we have coming across the border. Too, and I'm for that. You know, okay. that's the way you, you get people out. I mean, the people will get out. There's no question about that. You do the E-Verify system, which is very standard, and people will get out. Can I ask you we one last question? With hundreds of that, we have 176,000 illegal immigrants who are convicted criminals, okay, who are criminals. Uh, they're criminals. Right now, they're criminals. And they're walking around. They're going all over the place. And if you looked at the crime problem, which maybe you don't look at, but if you look at the crime problem, it is, it is very, very serious and very severe. We either have a border and we either have a country or we don't. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. And we I, don't have I borders. Could, I, I, have I, I agree with you entirely on that. On, on that, I agree with you entirely. You a country without borders is not a oh, country. Finally, okay, good. Then we okay. should we should end it on a friendly note. That's good. I, I think I, I should ask you one other uh, one one last thing though, because I'll make it's the country that is... much stronger, Vicky, than a guy like Cruz who doesn't have a clue. I will make it much stronger, much safer, much better. Our military will be built up. We'll knock out ISIS. Uh, I will do a much better job, believe me, than somebody like him. Believe me. I would I would just ask you to just you know unify. Unify. Okay. Uh, if, if you I'm, lock this I'm up. I'm a unifier. I unify. mean, you might not be seeing it now, but believe me, I'll be a unifier. Well, not uh, like yeah, what yeah. We right now in office with Obama, who's the great, the great divider. Please, please target your, uh, your, your attacks to Hillary Clinton. Please. Please. Rather than having a seat at our own. But it was uh, good to have you on the program, Donald yeah, Trump. When, Thank I, you when, for... I, when I hit somebody, I'm a counterpuncher. I always hit back. I mean, I'm not starting anything. And I never started anything with Cruz. And he started it. And let me finish it. But I always – I'm a counterpuncher. Remember this. He starts things. And 
so far, I've been finishing things, but that's the way it is. So I'm not hitting. I'm not. I don't know hitting. how he, well, he didn't. He didn't I start believe, the wife row. He didn't start the wife did. row. Of course he did. Of course he did. He sent a card of a model picture that my wife took many years ago. The cover of GQ that, that magazine. Wasn't, that wasn't Ted Cruz. Was oh, of that course wasn't. it was. Are you so naive? You are really naive. It I was actually Liz Mayer's. It was I'm Liz Mayer's. 501, oh, no, Make did. America Awesome, and it was immediately denounced by Ted Cruz's oh, campaign. Yeah, a, break. a super PAC. But it was. A super, a, a super PAC that he's friendly with said it. And by the way, who bought the copyrights for the picture? Why don't you try finding out who bought the copyrights but, for but, the picture? But Make America Awesome, the, the super PAC run the by Daily Liz Mayer, is not affiliated Daily with Ted Cruz. The Daily Beast did a big article yesterday. How about this? Saying How about no more? Media, not Trump. That did the National Enquirer. So and no more wife Powers, bashing. A very respected person also did an article. No, no, the National Enquirer is not that. respected. That 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 article about the alleged affairs was as as well sourced as a game of telephone. It was I knew a guy who knew a guy who may have known someone who had an affair. I didn't put it. I didn't put it in. He, somebody put it in. It wasn't me. Now, two articles came out that it was Rubio that did it. I don't know who did it. But it, it might have. Look, how about this? How about wives and kids off limits? Well, that's okay. All you have to do is tell that to Cruz because he started. If I, if I can get Senator much, Cruz Vicky, on the program, I would say best, the same. Best of luck to you, Vicki. And of I, luck. I appreciate the, the time, uh, the generosity of time today, Donald Trump. It was actually really fun. He just hung up on me. That's okay. No, he gave me 25 minutes. I mean, that was fun. He's hard. It's hard not to like him. It's hard. It is hard. I mean, it just is because he's he's got a I don't know. He's got a certain it's just sort of a friendly sound in his voice. So in any case, that was fun. It was fun for me, too. We'll take a quick break. Politics, policies, plus important developments on the major stories of the day with Sean Hannity. Weeknights 6 to 9. Stay informed all day, every day on News Talk 1130 WISN, Milwaukee. An iHeart Radio station. Welcome back to the program. Oh, gosh. Armin says. What was the what was the most intense interview I ever did? That wasn't intense with Trump. That was kind of just I don't know. It was sort of fun. Um, Howard Dean, I think, because that was just pure combat. That it, Donald Trump was a lot like when I interviewed Al Franken, and it, which is not to say that I'm calling Donald Trump Al Franken, but Al Franken wouldn't hang up. <laughs> I was I was like half waiting for Trump to just hang up. I'm like, hell, if you'll go, I'll go. I mean, let's just keep going. Why not? You know, I, I you know, it, there was no set time on this thing. So, but that was, and I had sort of the same um, sense of, it was just sort of fun uh, when I had a chance to interview Al Franken too. And then he, I, I remember Al Franken called me back like three times after, after the interview was over so he could clarify things he said. I don't know if I'm going to get that from Trump. I do appreciate the time. I mean, it was... <laughs> I was I was gone when Ted Cruz was available. I hope the uh, candidate makes himself available again. But uh, I think he was probably I don't know. I think he was told that talk radio in Wisconsin's not friendly to him. I think is what he was probably expecting. I think he probably knew that. I would think he would know that going in. Um, who knows? But that was it. Was kind of fun. So uh, I. I don't know what to say about some of the stuff he said, but uh, we'll just leave it at that. Um, I was nicer than I, w I was much, much nicer than I could have been, really, because I do want him, if he wins Wisconsin, I do want him to be able to unify Republicans. I do want him to be able to pull back the, the, the coalition that was somewhat fragile, that was created <clears throat> when Scott Walker uh introduced act 10 that 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 grassroots coalition <coughs> of some very very disparate groups that we managed to pull together in Wisconsin that allowed us to find unity in at the very least you know limited messages with the libertarians 
who, you know, most of the time are shooting spit wads at Republicans, were standing shoulder to shoulder with Republicans, uh, moderate Republicans who normally can't abide, you know, the the hardcore right wingers standing shoulder to shoulder. We had we had the John Birch people and we had liberal Republicans standing next to each other in Wisconsin. We had we had moderate Democrats who were sick and tired of the union BS. We had, you know, folks pulled together around the issue of property taxes and, 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 and taxation in general. We had all of it sort of held together with a, a loose uh, tie that was sort of generally described as a, as sort of a freedom movement kind of, it's everybody sort of had the sense that this was about making Wisconsin a freer place that brought people together. Um, so that's what I'm hoping he, because right now I have, I, I, I've had people who I've known for 15 years and I have, I stood in the trenches with during the recall battle who wouldn't walk across the street to say hello. And that's, that's what we have done in the conservative movement in Wisconsin. We have, we have, it, it's like we're back in 2011 during the occupation only the people who are coming after folks now are fellow Republicans or former coalition members of this sort of loosely formed coalition we got together in Wisconsin that helped to propel Scott Walker to election victory, helped to propel uh, the uh, the re- Scott Walker to a recall election victory, and helped, helped to elect David Prosser to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. That didn't happen because we agreed on everything. That happened because we had Republicans who were able to unify folks on that 80% of core issues. And the bow around everything was freedom. Anyway, up on my blog at Newstalk1130.com slash Vicky. It's where the Donald Trump interview is. I got to take a quick break. Thirty. The uh, toll free line is 800-838-9476. All right, we'll get some calls here in a sec. I also have um, other things to some, some housekeeping stuff to get to on the program. And David Karst from the Milwaukee County Republican Party is going to join me. Um, he's got there's a huge event or as Donald Trump might say, huge event coming up on April 1st. I do believe tickets are still available. I, I think you're going to have to get them fast. All the candidates are going to be in Milwaukee on April 1st. All of them. Ted Cruz, Donald Trump. And John Kasich, I guess all the Republican candidates are going to be in Milwaukee. Um, so I'll let David give you details on that coming up a little bit closer to the end of the show. All right, Kevin, thank you for holding. I appreciate it. Welcome to the program. Hi there. I was Hi. struck by the fact that uh, Donald, who doesn't know you from Adam, could have faced any kind of questions he got. And the tone of the station has been Trump's not a conservative, so... I think he probably knew that. He came on completely unafraid and took every question you had. Nothing was scripted. Nothing was marked off limits. And I give him a lot of credit for that. I think Cruz would have done that, too. I suspect Bernie might have done that. But Hillary would no more do that than I, even though she has the room to do it. No, she wouldn't have. She wouldn't, she won't, she's not doing any kind of media like that. So, yeah, I totally gave him, gave him credit. He didn't, have, um, he didn't have a list of submitted questions. And, and no. it, that was that was the story of Obama, by the way, back in 2008 when he was running, when he was going on shows and he was his his team allegedly was handing out questions. That has never happened with the Republican people candidates. Like people like him because they trust that he'll make good decisions because he's all about but, winning. Well, and everything he said on the show people. was I mean, some of it was absolutely unintelligible nonsense. So, I, I mean. That. <laughs> but it's both, basically, when you put him on a task, he wins. And what we're afraid of and tired of is nice guys with good manners who don't win. Because Mama Bush said so or, you know, the, the rules. And it's time to throw some of those rules aside, and he seems to be that guy. All right. That's well, I would disagree with you on that because those rules have been thrown aside in terms of, uh, you know, being too nice and not winning. Um, and, they, and they've actually been thrown aside with somebody who is much more substantive and consistently conservative and who actually has gone up against the establishment. 
I don't. I, I, I fail to understand. I fail to understand where all of this comes from, when there has been a consistent fighter against the rhinoism of Congress, and he's going to be in Wisconsin today. And he was on with Matt Kittle on Friday, and his name's Ted Cruz. I guess I'm trying to figure out why you guys are so e- eager to abandon policy because somebody's willing to fight when you've got somebody who has policy chops but is also willing to fight. So why would you want to abandon the policy end of that? Because it's fun? Everybody's tired of politicians. Okay. All right. Every, well, you know, but you these are politicians. They're politicians. I am a politician. I mean, anybody who is involved in politics and the idea of promoting politics, working in politics, working near politics is a politician. So we're talking about politicians to the right, politicians to the left. Donald Trump is a politician. Bernie Sanders is a politician. Hillary Clinton is a politician. Ted Cruz is a politician. So don't say you're tired of politicians because that's who you're electing. You're electing a politician. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. I like that Donald Trump hung in there. That was fun. Um, And I do like that Republicans will always just walk into it. They just, I mean, Ted Cruz, I I wasn't here uh, when Ted Cruz was on the program. Scott Walker always would walk right into it. He never asked for scripts. He never asked for, uh, he never asked for talking points, never submitted any. Ron Johnson's the exact same way. Paul Ryan is the exact same way. They don't have handlers. So that's something, and and I don't know about Bernie Sanders. Uh, I think Bernie's probably someone who's got handlers now, but, uh, but Hillary Clinton would never do that. And she won't do that because she's not looking to, to try to build the same. She doesn't have to build a coalition. She has to turn out the base. We have to build a coalition and turn out the base. All she has to do in Wisconsin is turn out her base in two places, Milwaukee and Madison. We have to build conservative coalitions, and our coalitions don't don't just say, oh, okay, you're on the right. Well, we're all together then, because that's what the left does. Your union, I'm Planned Parenthood, fine. We're both liberals. We don't care that we might disagree on anything. We're just joined at the hip as political partners come election time. It's what they do. We don't do that. We have to pull together coalitions of people and we have to convince them that it's okay to set aside a whole bunch of stuff they disagree with you on in order to come together for the purposes of an election. That is so much harder to do. And Trump in Wisconsin has managed to turn coalition conservative members against each other. People who stood in the trenches and fought back against the recalls stood in the trenches and faced down angry, really angry, violent, left-wing agitators who wanted to take over our government. And those groups of people have turned on each other in our state because of this battle. I'm sick of it because you can't win by subtraction. You in, On the Republican side, you need to win by addition. And while Donald Trump thinks he's going to get Democrats, Democrats are locked down in Wisconsin for Hillary Clinton. They're locked in for her. All she's got to do is turn out Democrats in Milwaukee and Madison. And what the Republicans have to do is get they've got to maintain their power position in the Fox Valley. They have got to overdrive turnout in Waukesha County. They have to take depressed, miserable, completely debased conservatives in Milwaukee and Madison and get them to think their vote's going to matter and to overdrive turnout in those cities as well. And the way you do that is you have somebody who can unify those coalitions. All Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders would have to do in Wisconsin is turn out the cities. Turn out the cities at an average Democrat pace. And if the Republicans don't figure out a way to overdrive the enthusiasm level of the voters again, we lose. Wisconsin being carved up like this electorally in terms of how Republicans win statewide is a real pain in the neck and it presents a real challenge. You don't get to just pick one part of the base, focus in on that part of the base and think you're gonna win a statewide election. And oh yeah, that's right. The Republicans 
when they're running in a presidential race in Wisconsin or trying to win a statewide election. Gotta take a quick